my last like month and a half of my jail sentence. Mm -hmm. So the second half of that eight months was spent in a place called Agassi Youth Center. Mm -hmm. It was in Portage La Prairie. Okay. Now this is a jail designed for people who left, who got sentenced from the Manitoba Youth Center. And when you get sentenced, you have to go to another place, right? Mm -hmm. Like in, for adults, it's Heading Lee or yeah. Stony Mountain, right? But for youth, it's Portage La Prairie, Agassi. And in there, they have open custody and closed custody. Open custody is for people who are not like very bad offend. Like they didn't like closed custody is usually like murder and stuff yeah. like that. And it's typically people who have proven that they have no real chance at like rehabilitating to society. Yeah. Open custody is for people who have a chance at like rehabilitating. And what open custody allows you to do is if you have respected the law within the jail you can leave jail while you're still in jail and come back okay so they start you off with two hours you leave for two hours and you go into portage of prairie your mom comes your dad comes you go for a coffee hmm. and then if you prove that you go for four hours Damn, okay. and then you go for eight hours hmm. and then 12 hours and then at the 12 hours you could go into winnipeg and then come back yeah. and then one night and then if you have a reason they might extend that one night and for hmm. me my reason was i was about to graduate grade 12 I was doing courses in jail, so I was getting credits in jail. Mm -hmm. okay. And they said, hey, Ben, if you could find a high school, we will let you go to um, school on the weekdays and come back to jail on the weekends, wow. which was crazy. Yeah. 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 Right. So at this point, I got kicked out of River East already. And the River East School Division wasn't going to allow me in. Mm -hmm. And luckily, like one of my best friends from childhood, she her dad was a principal at Maples. Okay. And I went there with my mom and we sat with him. And he's like all right, Ben, like, this is going to be difficult, but I'm going to give you a shot. Mm -hmm. He's like, you just got to promise that you're not going to like screw up here. And that was like my big break. You know, mm -hmm. people have their big breaks. Like, that was my big break. Yeah. And essentially on Sunday nights, I would leave Portage of Prairie Jail. I would take a Greyhound bus. I would arrive in Winnipeg. My mom would pick me up. I'd go home. I would sleep. I'd wake up and I'd go to school all week. And then Friday at 3.30, right after school ended, I would go back to jail. Oh, no. Damn. And I had to carry this paper around. I wish I brought it, actually. I had to carry this paper around. It was called a reintegration leave. And you had to carry it in your pocket. And if you don't, it was a crime. Hmm. Because they, if I were to have got pulled over by the police, they would see on their system that I'm an inmate. Mm -hmm. right. And that I, I'm an, they would assume I'm an escaped. But the paper shows that he's been permitted to leave under these conditions. And those conditions were essentially like every moment that I like left a door, I had to call my probation officer. If I left my house to go to school, I called. If I arrived at school, I called. When I left school, I called. I couldn't leave. And I remember I, I was trying not to make friends at Maple because I went to Maples. Yeah. I didn't want to make friends because I felt that if I did, I would go back into that world. But then it was inevitable that I'd meet a couple of people. And they'd, towards the end, everybody's kind of going out every weekend because it's the last months of high school yeah. and it's summer now. And they would invite me out every weekend. I'm like, hey, guys, I'm busy. I'm busy. I'm busy. And then finally, when we, we, we got to graduation, I told them the real story and wow. they just, their jaw dropped. Yeah. Like, so every weekend that we were inviting you out, you were going back to jail. I'm like, yeah. So <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> it was the same. So they didn't know at all. No, you didn't tell. Uh, yeah, so you just yeah went so to didn't. Yeah, so then uh, how well, yeah. how did you deal with that mentally? Like personally, yeah. keeping that in, it was very easy because yeah. you're comparing it to what it could be. It could be me sitting in jail seven days a week, yeah. right? Like yeah. when you hit rock bottom, you know the the smallest things make you happy, yeah. right? Like you, if I gave you a tiny piece of bread right now for lunch, you would be like, what the hell is this? But if you were starving, you'd be so grateful for it. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and, you know, I, I have this analogy, like when you, when you hit rock bottom um, or like if you're going through life and you're just looking straight, like nothing bad happens to you and you're just looking straight, you're looking left, you're looking right, like you see a lot of potential um, in front of you. But when you hit rock bottom, like the sky is like what you're seeing. And if you could get back up, like you, there's no limit to what you can accomplish.